All right, moving right along with these sequences and series, we're going to look at geometric next. Um, this week will be a little bit quicker video-wise, just because geometric, it's the same type of process, um, just dealing with a different formula for the most part, that's about it. Uh, but we are looking at a, com a common ratio in geometric sequences. We'll talk about that in the next slide. Uh, just a heads up here as well, seniors, this is your last week of new material. Uh, you're still done May 13th, so this is the last full week you have. There should be no new material, definitely not for me, but there should be no ma new material coming the week of May 11th, that Monday. Uh, so this is the last week of new material, so please still get this in for me. Um, that's about it. Uh, juniors will have two more weeks after this week, so three weeks total of material. Um, but let's just get rolling with this. Geometric sequences. They have a common ratio um, instead of a common difference like last week. Um, so instead, you're just dividing uh, instead of subtracting. So this common ratio, uh, or this constant ratio, is called the common ratio. And it's going to be uh, noted by uh, the variable r, which should make sense as well. So in this geometric sequence, we have 3, 9, 27, and 81. All we're doing is multiplying the previous term by 3 in order to get to the next one. So the common ratio is 3. So to, to find that common ratio, you just take the second term divided by the first term, double check it, go to the third term divided by the second term. All right, so you're going to go, again, you're not going to go first term divided by second term and you have one third. That's a completely different ratio there, so just be careful with that. Um, but we're going to divide those. So second term divided by first term, third term divided by second term, down the line, fourth term divided by third term, so on, so on. So same, everything's the same on the worksheet. Everything's the same in our notes, just dealing with geometric, not arithmetic. That's it. So we look here at this first one. We have 2, 8, 32, 128, 512. I want to see if this sequence is geometric. Obviously, you can see that, yes, it is. To kind of prove that, just doing it in our head. I don't need any work on this. This is just me showing my process through this for our notes. Um, I just take the second term divided by the first. 8 divided by 2 is 4. I double check it. 32 divided by 8. I get 4 again. If you want to triple check it, go for it. You're going to get 4. Uh, so we have that. We can have negatives in here. Now, careful here. This is ones that I'm going to need you to watch yourself on. And I need a little bit more. I want these radicals reduced, or not radicals, fractions reduced. So when I divide second term by the first term, I have negative 48 over 96. That reduces down to negative 1 half. All right, so the common ratio is actually going to be negative 1 half. Let me throw that in there. Um, I forgot the negative in my answer. Just throw that in there quick. So we have that. So common ratio is negative one half. Notice the signs are switching between each one. Uh, so it is going to be negative, uh, which is possible in this case. Now in this one, we go from a six to a nine. Nine divided by six is three halves. We double check it. We go 15 over nine. That reduces down to five thirds. Reduce the fractions, obviously. There is no common ratio because it is not a geometric sequence. No need to triple check. There's never a need to triple check. It's just really if you just want to check yourself, that's it. So you'll have five problems just like that. Tell me yes or no. If it is a yes, tell me what the common ratio is. Um, just like last week's worksheet. Next, so extra examples there. Um, Next, we have our geometric rule or our geometric explicit formula. So a little bit different from last week, we have a sub n, which is just the nth term in the sequence. We have a sub 1, which is the first term in the sequence still. We have r as our common ratio, so it's a sub 1 times r all to the n minus 1. So the ratio is taken to the n minus 1 power. Numbers are going to get bigger quicker on this because we are raising it to a power. Um, not just multiplying, it's not linear in form, it's more exponential in form. Um, so we're just going to do the same stuff that we did last week. Some things are going to be a little bit easier um, because 
just like last week, we only need two things in order to write the explosive formula. We need the first term, and we need the ratio, or the common ratio, rather. And there's going to be no work. You're not going to need to distribute anything or anything like that once you have those two terms. So everything else is going to be geometric from here. So you don't necessarily need to double check and triple check. It's up to you if you want to do that or not. So we have our first sequence, 4, 20, 100, 500. First thing is easy. Just finding the first term in the sequence is 4. The common ratio, I didn't change that, is 5. 20 divided by 4 is 5. 100 divided by 2, 20 is 5. Uh, simplify the fraction if need be, that note will just be there. So once I have my A1, my first term, and my common ratio, my R, I literally just plug it in. There's nothing else to do. All right, Being raised to that power, I can't do anything. It's not 5n minus 5 or anything like that. That's it. And big thing here, as I noted below, you cannot multiply 4 and 5. All right, because 5 is being raised to an exponent, so 4 and 5 stay separate. That's why it becomes a little bit easier. Then from there, I'm just asking for the fifth term in the sequence. You just plug in 5 for n and take it from there. Again, numbers get bigger much quicker here. Um, so I'm not asking for like the 20th term in the sequence. I'll be asking for a lower term in the sequence here. Um, so we have that. All right. So we have that example of me talking through. You have an extra example here you can just look at in your notes if you want. And then I have even more examples here pulled out from a book. Um, so you have more there as well. It's up to you. Um, so we have that. All right, next. We know our common ratio, but we don't know our first term. All right, so our common ratio is negative 1 half in this one. I'll be dealing with a fraction making a negative as well. All right, all right change all this moving forward. There we go. So we know our common ratio is negative one half. To find our first term, you just plug in what you know. 30 for a sub n. We don't know our first term, so we don't know that. We have negative one half is our ratio. Two is our n, so two minus one, one, you just subtract that first, negative one half to the one first power is just negative one half. Couple options you can do from here. You multiply both sides by the reciprocal, negative two, or divide both sides by negative one half. Either way, you get negative 60 as your first term. So you have that. Now, after that, you just plug it in. I'm not asking for anything more on this. I'm just asking for this portion here, all right? So I need to see a little bit of work to find that a sub 1. Um, I'm going to give you the explicit formula again as the answer key. Uh, so you can check yourself on it, but I'll need to see a little bit of work, please. Extra example there. All right, not much to it. Extra examples again, uh, if you need it. It's up to you there as well. Last one, the hardest one. Um, we don't know anything that we need. We don't know our first term. We don't know our, our uh, common ratio either. But we know two terms within the sequence. So we're going to need to set ourselves up with a system of equations again. It's going to be worked a little bit differently here. So hopefully the colors help us out. and Hopefully my organization, I feel like it's as good as it can be with this. Um, definitely much more organized than me doing it actually at the board. So we're going to write a system of equations using this information. So I just plug it in, 18 equals a sub 1, which we're trying to find, times r, which we're trying to find, then 3 minus 1. Same thing for the second formula, uh, just negative 486 and 6 for your a sub n and n respectively. Simplify that, obviously we have this. Now, we're not going to use combination like we did last week. We're going to use substitution. So we're going to get a1 by itself, a sub 1 by itself in one of the equations. I'm probably just going to pick the one with those smaller numbers. So I picked the first one in, in my example here. So I got a sub 1 by itself. All I did was just divide both sides by r squared. I take that 18 over r squared, plug it in for a sub 1 in the second equation. What I have 
curve here is next. So I plug that in. The r squared cancels with the r to the fifth, and you're left with an r cubed. So there's no more fraction, and there shouldn't be, all right, to make it a little bit easier. So you want to pick the one with the smaller exponent in order for that to happen. Then you work on getting r by itself. You divide both sides by 18. You get negative 27. Then you cube root both sides. You can cube root a negative, so don't forget that. Your common ratio is going to be negative 3. Then the work gets a little bit easier from here. You find a sub 1. All I do is plug in negative 3 into one of the equations. I chose the first, just smaller numbers. 18 equals a sub 1 times negative 3 squared. 18 equals a sub 1 times 9. Divide both, by, both sides by 9. You get a sub 1 is 2. Once you have a sub 1, the first term, and the common ratio, you plug it in, tell me my equation, you're done. All right, I need to see the work. I'm going to give you the explicit formula in the end. So you can check yourself, but I need to see the work with it, or else you're not getting full credit, so keep that in mind. So that's one example. I have another worked out example here. Same type of deal. Just look through it. Um, just something I want to make note of. I am going to square root this one just because I was left with an r squared, but you reduce the fraction. Make sure you reduce the fraction because square rooting both sides at that point is going to be tough. Then you square root one fourth, you square root top and bottom, you get one half. Um, so I just wanted to make note of that. You have an, another extra example here if you need it. And that's it. Worksheet's exactly the same as last week. Uh, I'm just looking at a geometric sequences, so we're using a different formula. That's all we're, it's the only change up on this. Um, so it shouldn't be anything too, too crazy, hopefully, especially if you were okay last week. Again, last week for seniors, please get this stuff in. As always, if you guys have questions, hit me up when you can. And that's about it. Have a good week, guys.